Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and our continuing series where we're going to be reviewing every Capcom CP, CP System Dash, CPS2, and CPS3 game. Today we're taking a look at Captain Commando, or as I like to call it, Mummy Commando, because why would you want to play a beat-em-up with any other character than a pink bandaged mummy? Before we get too far involved, if you can do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, and that notification bell, definitely help us out. And if you feel so inclined, we got a Patreon link down there as well if you want to support the channel. But Captain Commando is an absolutely outstanding beat-em-up. It's one of the best on this system. Now, it's not the best, and I'm sure you can guess what I'm going to say is the best when that video comes up. But this is a very, very close second. I love absolutely everything about it. It's strange. It's fun. It looks good. It's super detailed. The beat-em-up mechanics are awesome. When you beat certain enemies, their skeleton just rots from the inside of their corpse. I don't know who thought of that, but I think it's an absolutely outstanding idea. The amount of detail in this game is outstanding. I just want to stop and look at everything in the background. Even this one desk here, there's just so much on it. You can clearly tell they loved making this game. And you'll see there we're riding on a mech as well. There's a lot of different types of mechanics in this game. Some levels are going to feel more like shmups than they are beat-em-ups. And I do love when the developers kind of play around with the formula and give you different things because... While I do love the beat-em-up genre, and I've said on the channel before, every once in a while I do feel like they can get repetitive. After the, you know, 35th minute of just moving right and punching and kicking people, I'm kind of ready for the game to be over. But on a game like Captain Commando, you're going to get different types of gameplay in each stage, so that right when you're feeling like you might be a little bit bored with what you're doing, you're going to get something totally different to do, and it's going to make you want to continue to play moving forward. Now, of course, this is a beat-em-up, so the most important thing to talk about is the mechanics, and Capcom always does a great job with their beat-em-ups, and this is no different. I mean, they have a gigantic lineage of amazing beat-em-ups. Alien vs. Predator, Final Fight, The Punisher, you name it, if they made a beat-em-up, it's going to be good. But I would say that this is, you know, top three as far as Capcom beat-em-ups are concerned, and I may be partial to that just because I really love the graphics and the art style of this game. But, I mean, if you play this and you like beat-em-ups, you're definitely not going to walk away and say it's a bad game. Now, of course, for some reason in the 90s, if you did have to beat up a female character, they had to be dressed in some sort of bondage gear. It's basically like one of the Ninja Turtles and their, I can't remember what the name of that weapon is, a Sai except they're in bondage. I don't know why that is, but it's just one of those things. And now you'll see here we've jumped down underneath the museum and there's a gigantic caveman array and his eyes are glowing so I assume they are alive. So apparently under the museum there's just cavemen. It doesn't make any sense, but it's also really fun just to look at. But like I said, you know, punching, kicking, all the impacts of the strikes, they feel great. Everything about the actual gameplay of this game really hits well, pun very much intended, and you're going to have a ton of fun playing it. And one of the biggest compliments I can give it is that you don't need to be super precise with what plane you're on, because obviously you can move up and down, and your strikes will hit even if you're not perfectly aligned. And one of my biggest complaints about beat em up games so that sometimes your alignment if it's not perfect you're just going to be missing your hits and it feels like you're spending more time trying to line yourself up perfectly than you are playing the game captain commando has absolutely none of those issues whatsoever now it is an arcade game and it is a beat em up so in certain spots it's definitely going to be cheap and it's going to want to take your quarters and i would say that the bosses especially this one right here they're going to use projectiles to keep you away from them it's not my favorite mechanic in the world but it's just how the genre works so really i can't complain too much about it especially because i'm not actually putting quarters into the machine this is on free play so i'm not spending any of my money now of course in an arcade you know the game wants those quarters so it's definitely going to put up a little bit of you know struggle for you but i'll let you do now we've talked a lot about the mechanics but the music is also great in this game so go ahead and listen for like a minute and i'll come back and tell you more about why if you've never played this game you're missing out and should play it directly after the video but enjoy <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I just absolutely love the soundtrack to this game. It's really good. Capcom always made really awesome soundtracks for their arcade games, but each individual track is really tailored to the level that you're in. Obviously, this is Asian themed. We're getting that same sort of Asian vibe in the soundtrack. And interestingly enough, this game really looks and sounds like another Capcom game, Battle Circuit. Even though they have absolutely no real direct connection, it reminds me about that a lot. And that is one game that I've talked about on the channel before, and I'll be linking in the playlist when we do the CPS2 stuff. But who is Captain Commando? Well, he was a spokesperson basically for Capcom in the 80s. It was a little in-house character that they developed for advertising. They decided, hey, why not give him, you know, his own game? And I'm super glad they did because it's absolutely awesome. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, earlier the bosses are just here to take your life and take your quarters but there is special animations for some of the bosses when you do dine you'll see here i just got split right in half and i love that and that's not something that's going to show up very often in the game but there's so many little minute details that are going on when you're playing the game i just love how much depth there is into the entire experience and I will say it is quite a long game too. I'm showing you basically chopped up versions of the first half of the game, but it's absolutely a game that you're going to get a lot of playtime out of. Now, would I buy this arcade PCB? Well, I probably would because that's what I like to do, but it is definitely not a cheap one, and there are other ways to play this game. I'm playing it on the Mr. FPGA board, but it's available in other Capcom collections as well. So unless you're a hardcore arcade PCB enthusiast and collector like I am, I would say that there's plenty of other really good ways to play the game. But no matter how you play it, you definitely want to check it out because it is super fun. I even love that they have those star wipes in between transitions. They've thought about giving it a little bit more flair. And like I said earlier, you know, you get different gameplay types. You're going to get these mechs here. One is red and one is blue. One's going to be shooting fire and the other one's going to be shooting ice. You know, all the different colorways they've chosen, all the different details really just go to make this game feel really well thought out, well developed and special. And graphically, there's just so much going on. You have all those different spectators in the background. They're all moving. I mean, granted, the animations are very basic, but there's a ton going on at screen at any one given moment in time. And you can just tell that they're really pushing this hardware to its absolute limit because this was one of the later games in the CP system's lifespan. Like I said earlier, just when you're kind of getting bored with beating people up, you're going to get something slightly different. Now we're on a hoverboard, kind of feels like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and we're going right and shooting different enemies. It starts feeling a little bit like a shmup. Now obviously it's still got some beat em up elements to it, because we can strike the enemies as they go by, but it just gives you something slightly different to do. Right around the moment in time we were wondering, how much longer do I really want to start going right and punching and kicking the enemies in front of me? And I think that's a really smart design decision, and I wish more beat-em-ups did that. They just kind of give you different things to do in between stages, just to kind of lighten the monotony a little bit. Because even though I love the beat-em-up genre, even I can recognize that they're not the type of games that you're going to play four of in a row. I'm not going to play this and then go play Battle Circuit directly afterwards. I've probably gotten my fill of beat-em-up games. But you'll see here there's a timer on screen and we have to basically do something within a certain set time period. And I just really like that. It's a really fun game. But like I said, if you've never played Captain Commando, I highly recommend you check it out however you play it. Because Capcom is notorious for making amazing beat-em-ups. And this is just one in the long, long list of games that they made and absolutely killed it at. Short of that, we will be back next week with another episode in our Capcom review series. And I'll have videos on Thursday, Friday, and Sunday as well. But if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Love chatting with you guys. And like I said earlier, if you could do me a huge favor, go down below and ring that notification bell and subscribe. It definitely helps me out. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this game. Like I said, if you've never played it, you're missing out and you absolutely should. Other than that, we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.